This is 12.6 humoral immune response notes. The essential question is, how does the humoral immune response function and how are active and passive immunity different? Humoral immune response is also called the antibody-mediated immunity. Uh, antibodies are the actual proteins that defend against the infection, and they are located in various body fluids. Lymphocytes, remember that mature in the bone marrow are called B cells, and this type of cells are what is involved in the humoral immune response. Also, both B and T cells have receptor proteins that bind to the antigen. So here is a picture of a mature B cell and a mature T cell. And notice that they look very similar in structure, but the receptors are different between the B cells and the T cells. The B cells are the one with the Y-shaped receptor, and that's where the antigens um, bind to, and the mature T cells do not have that Y shape. Each B cells that are created, that are made, have a different um, receptors on its surface, and each receptor where it is very specific specific to the type of antigen that it could bind to. So notice that there are different types of B cells here, showing you four different forms of the B cells, and they all differ in its the antigen-specific binding site. Primary humoral response is primary mean first. This is the first time you ever come in contact with a specific type of antigen, and what the B cells, what do they do is try to bind to that specific antigen. And then only maybe one will be able to be able to bind to that area. And then when the one that is able to bind to the antigen is selected, then only that B cell is cloned, or what is which in this case means that is made copy of. This is what is known as clonal selection. The cloning of the B cells to create the antibodies is the primary humoral response, and most B cells become plasma cells, which then will um, produce the antibodies. And the function of the antibody is, is they travel through different types of body fluids like the blood, lymph, and mucus, and they seek out any type of antigen with a specific type of the um, binding site as the antibodies, and then they will do various things to uh, destroy the antigen or the pathogen. And then the antibodies usually last four to five days, but depending on what type of ant uh, antibody it is, it can vary. So some, most of the B cells become antibodies or they pl become plasma cells to produce antibodies, but some will become what is known as memory B cells or memory cells. And this will later then will be able to carry out the secondary humoral response. So here's a general overview of the humoral response. So the first thing is that the B cell encounters a specific antigen, then the B cells response to, so in this case, it's the plasma C, I mean, B cell C, that is the one that fits with the antigen, and then it's going to clone itself. That's the second stage. Then the cloning of the B cells will lead to two types of cells being made. The type of cells is um, memory cells that will be used later in time, and then some will become the plasma cells. The plasma cells will then secrete or produce antibodies, and then they will put it into the circulation, like blood or mucus or other types of body fluids to be used to carry out the immune function. Secondary humoral response is when you come in contact with the same antigen that you came across the first time, uh, in a later time in the future, and it could last years. So the secondary humoral response could happen any time in the person's life. And the second time, the antigen is reintroduced into the body, the reaction or the response time is much faster, and it's going to be more efficient, and it's going to last much longer. So comparing the difference between the primary response and the secondary response, notice here is the exposure 
to the antigen here in time zero. And then it takes about a week in this case, and the there is a surge of antibody production, and then the as the levels of the antigens or the pathogen are being destroyed, the levels of antibodies goes down. And then the second time the person is exposed to the antigen, then the response time notice that is very short, okay, but the, and then the production of the antibody is much greater and then they are destroying it at a much, much faster rate. The main purpose of the secondary immune response is to destroy the pathogen or the antigen that's going to cause problems or get you to get sick before the actual symptoms show up. Um, as memory cells become activated and they divide very rapidly when the new antigen is reintroduced into the body. Okay, so that's the key word is that it happens really quick. So here's a picture showing you the naive B cell is the one that has been chosen as the one that fits with the antigen and then you make antibodies and they will go and destroy the virus. Then later in time, the B cells are circulating and they come in contact with the virus that is specific for the virus A that you were exposed to earlier and then they quickly produce the antibodies then will then destroy the antigen much faster. Okay, so there are uh, two types of immunities. One is called active, and in active immunity, your body, your body is the one that actually have to physically make the antibodies, okay? So you are actively doing something. There are two types of active immunity. There is the naturally acquired and artificially acquired. Naturally acquired happens in a normal everyday life, and when you come in contact with some kind of a pathogen or antigen, and you'll go through a whole primary immune response, and your body produces the antibodies. Artificially acquired active immunity happens when you are actually physically given um, a vaccine or some type of, um, in a non-normal conditions, given the antigen or slightly altered antigen into the body and to make your body make the antibodies, okay? So the only type of um, example of artificially acquired active immunity would be the vaccines. The great thing about vaccines and the purpose of the vaccine is to kind of completely eliminate the primary immune response. So usually during the, not usually, but always, in a primary immune response, people get sick. And so a lot of times when people get certain, sick with certain kind of viruses, it could actually kill them or really, really do damage to the body. So a vaccine is there to kind of eliminate the primary immune response but, and go straight to the purpose of it is to make the memory cells so that memory cells are circulating in your body and that if you ever naturally come in contact with that antigen or the virus, um, then your body will quickly put on a secondary immune response and then eliminate that whole sickness. So the advantage of active immunity is that you are creating the memory cells to protect, have a protection for lifetime. But the disadvantage of active immunity is that it takes a while for your body to make the antibodies. So if you are sick and showing symptoms and it is such an aggressive infection, you could actually die before the antibodies are made, which could be dangerous. So that is the disadvantage, is that it takes a long time for it to happen. Passive immunity means that you really are not doing anything and you are not making the antibodies, but the antibodies are given to you, okay, from some other source. Um, also, there are two types of passive immunity. There is lack, naturally acquired passive immunity and artificially acquired passive immunity. Um, naturally acquired, just like the other one, um, naturally means that it happens in a normal everyday uh, circumstances in life and it happens when a mother breastfeeds her child or her baby and um, before even the milk comes in there is a chemical or a clear fluid that comes out called clostrum and it is full of antibodies that is uh, given to the baby that will protect temporarily uh, protect the baby. Um, 
the artificially acquired passive immunity is if um, you are given an injection of the actual antibody. So passive immunities, you are given the antibody. Active immunity, you have to make your own antibodies. The advantage of passive immunity is that it is the response is immediate so that if a person is already showing symptoms and they're going to die from an infection, you give them the antibodies, it acts really quick, and then it takes care of the problem. The, the disadvantage is that the, you, since you are given the antibodies, your body did not have time to or weren't able to make the memory cells, so it will not protect you in the long run. So that's the disadvantage. Okay, so here's a chart showing you the categorization or the breakdown of the acquired immunities. You have the naturally acquired immunity, which you, you acquire the immunity by a natural process, everyday, normal, everyday situations. Artificially means you are actually physically have to be given an injection or a medication to have the immunity. So examples of actively uh, acquired, act Actively, a naturally acquired active immunity would be uh, when you get sick from a uh, cold virus or flu. That would be an example of actively, active, naturally acquired active immunity. And then artificially acquired active immunity would be given a vaccine for the specific type of uh, virus or bacteria. Uh, naturally acquired passive immunity is, remember, natural means that it's everyday situation. An example would be a mother breastfeeding her infant. And then a artificially acquired passive immunity is the serum is the, uh, the, the, med the medicine or the medication that are given in the form of an uh, injection, and the serum is the actual um, antibodies that you are given. 12.6 notes homework. Number one, how does clonal selection occur? Number two, what are the functions of the plasma and memory cells? Number three, what are the advantages of active and passive immunity?